It's time to vote your Thunder players into the 2014 NBA All-Star Game in New Orleans. Cast your vote through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or by using your mobile device. Visit thunder.nba.com for more information, and remember fans, vote Thunder, vote often. Welcome back now to the studios of the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. Brian Davis and I are now joined by Nick Gallo from Thunder.NBA.com. Well, of course, recently, if you've watched this team play, you have noticed something happen in the fourth quarter. They held Golden State to 21 points, Milwaukee to 14, Denver to 21. There is something they are doing at the end of the games to lock down. Brian, what have you noticed? Denver 6 of 21, Milwaukee 4 of 18 in the fourth quarter, and we talked earlier about the rebounding being part of that, but I want to point two guys out. I want to talk about the contributions of Derek Fisher, who has been so disruptive, and Scott Brooks, first player that Brooks mentioned after both the Milwaukee and the Denver games was Fisher. And then let's not forget the return of Kendrick Perkins, who may not stat it up. We talk about this all the time, but guys, what he is able to do in terms of pushing the other team's bigs away from their sweet spots, disrupting their shooting rhythm, you cannot put a price on that. There's a level of both physical and mental toughness that's necessary in those fourth quarters, particularly when the team is down to just lock in and get stops. Those are two guys that Coach Brooks knows he can count on. The key for him, as he's been saying, is finding more and more lineups that can play with that defensive force, that mentality on every possession throughout the game, not just the fourth quarter. Something I want to point out, and this is not totally official, but when the Thunder has started these comeback runs, there are two constants that have been on the floor for Oklahoma City in those at the beginning of those rallies, late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Kevin Durant, no surprise there, but Reggie Jackson has also been part of every comeback run the Thunder has made to this point. The aggression that Jackson's been playing with, along with, of course, the, the scoring force that is Kevin Durant, uh, have really helped solidify this team's offensive flow during those times of the game that can also balance out the defense lockdown mentality that's been going on during the stretches. Oh, and we've talked about it for years, but the Thunder prides themselves on their defense, but it's not that easy. It's not like they're just going to flip a switch and turn on their defense in the fourth quarter. There are certain things that they are doing that have made them improve, and you are going to talk about that. Well, Coach Brooks has talked a lot about playing with force on the defensive end, particularly on the perimeter, whether it's fighting around screens to get to shooters or locking up a man who has the ball. And that's something that I've been working on for the site as well. Playing with force on the defensive end is a characteristic head coach Scott Brooks wants to see out of his Thunder team each and every possession. Fighting through screens, chasing shooters around the floor, and closing out with proper technique are all ways that Thunder defenders must be both mentally and physically tough. In this league, it's two or three or four passes to a shot, and you know, we got to be on point for 24 seconds of defense. So. It gives opportunities for us to, to get long rebounds and get transition and do what we do best. The ball is the only thing that scores, and you have to have good pressure on the basketball. You can't let the, the, the player with the ball make easy decisions. Staying glued to opponents on the perimeter has a twofold benefit for the Thunder defense. It both prevents easy entry passes or shots by players who have the ball, as defenders can deny passing lanes and comfortable shooting motions. In addition, keeping tight coverage as wing players cut and curl off of screens leaves little separation for continued ball movement, forcing opposing possessions to turn into isolation plays with the shot clock winding down. When we do that, uh, our activity and our length and athleticism can really help our defense. You know, a lot of the decision making that goes on on the perimeter comes at the screen and roll action. Are you going to go under the screen? Are you going to go over the screen? But a lot of what these guys have to do in defending off the ball, these shooters like J.J. Redick coming up for the Clippers and uh, for O.J. Mayo and some of these other, other players that can shoot on the wing, is how are you going to fight through those screens and get there? And, and Brian, it's a full five-man effort in that situation. It comes down in good part to communication. And if you look, I talked about Perkins earlier. He is probably the man who sets the tone. Um, helping his teammates, calling out screens, letting them know the screens are coming. Also, sometimes you can tell your teammate, go under, go over. Sometimes whether you go under or over, that's kind of a feel thing. But the one thing that helps the Thunder, even if you make, quote, unquote, a mistake 
in a given moment. The Thunder's got such good length, and we've talked about kind of the classic Thunder body type. Uh, it's a combination of those things, but it really does start with communication. Well, and as we saw there, when they start doing this and playing defense like that, that defense is turning into offense. They're forcing turnovers, they're getting steals, and they're able to run the floor. How has that defense turned into more points in transition, which when the Thunder gets out on the run, they're hard to stop. I think it comes down to commitment, really, in the end. And I think that, as you see, Westbrook's return has certainly helped. Jeremy Lamb is a guy who uh, early on was struggling with his offense, but he was so committed at the defensive end. And if you look at the way that Jay Lamb comes in and plays uh, on any given night, he's going to give you a couple of steals, might block a shot. He's going to uh, help out with an assist. And then, uh, again, just the continuity that this team has enjoyed over the last several seasons now, I think that's a big part of it as well. Well, you mentioned the length and the athleticism, the, the Thunder style of player here. Jeremy Lamb fits that to a T. He's lengthy, he's quick, he can leap out of the building. And that's a way that the Thunder can turn defense into offense so easily. Getting hands in the passing lane, staying active. And then all of a sudden you got three guys running the floor ready for a slam dunk opportunity. And all I got to say is that when I get to be 39 years old, I want to be able to run the floor as well as Derek Fisher does. <laughs> <laughs> he is a fountain of youth. All right, thanks guys. Ahead on Thunder Insider. All these folks behind me, they're the first and only ones to have a Thunder Girl calendar. Just talking to them and smiling and laughing with them and um, the calendars that they're buying and it's, it's amazing to be a part of.